Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com. And in my short video today, I just wanna show the uh, wiring on this range receptacle. So we've got a 50 amp range receptacle and uh, I just wanna basically show you the, you know, how the hookup is done. First off though, uh, you wanna always check your local codes and pull any permits that you need for your local area to do any electrical work. Uh, also, if you're not comfortable with this or maybe you're not even allowed to do it yourself, then you should definitely be calling an electrician. And uh, one of the very first things you should always do on any electrical project is turn the breaker off. Don't just turn off a switch or unplug whatever, just turn the breaker off and then you know you should be a lot safer. In our demonstration we have today, uh, I've just used some scrap wire that I had. So the uh, gauge of this wire is not indicative of what you should have. Uh, typically I believe in most areas for a range with a 50 amp, you're gonna be asked to have eight gauge wire. This is like, I forget what it even is, 12 gauge maybe. So the wiring here I'm just using because it's got the right colors and the correct number of wires. So it isn't actually the right gauge, just so you know that. And again, your code, your local code will dictate what you should use. So what we've got is the range receptacle, which don't confuse it with your laundry dryer receptacle. They can look very similar. If you don't have them side by side, you might, you might get them mixed up. Generally the packaging will tell you which is which, but on the laundry, it's got this funny shaped plug. So if you think of the L laundry, it's kind of your tip that this one is for your dryer. And this one here is for your, your uh, range, your stove. So they're 240 volt. Um, this is because they've got items in the stove that'll run on 240, like the elements, that sort of thing. But they also still need 120 volt um, supply to things like the timer and the clock. So, so they're 240 volt. Uh, the wiring is pretty simple, really. I'll just get some things moved here out of the way. Normally, right on the back of your connections, there's gonna be some writing or some lettering. Now, uh, I, I don't think the camera at all can zoom in that close, but over here, this one says ground. For reference, you can look on the front and the round looking plug is gonna be your ground. Okay, so our bare wire needs to go to the ground. No big deal. Pretty much always straight across from it is the white wire, which should be the center slot here. We'll go into there. This one is marked and like I said, you just can't read it. Now for the two hot lines, you're usually just gonna have an X and a Y. And simply, it doesn't really matter whether you have the black on the right side or the red on the right side, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got one hot on one side and one hot on the other side, everything's gonna work fine. So put them in, make sure your, your screws or your attachment point is good and tight. And then you're ready to remount the, the whole thing back in your box. So one other thing to, to remember about is to make sure your ground wire, this bare wire, is also grounded to the box. Okay. So when you're uh, mounting your box, this electrical box or this plug, you wanna get your orientation right always. So typically on a, on a range, you're going to have it low, low in the wall, like down to the floor so that it, all this stuff kind of fits in behind the drawer area. Typically the drawer in the bottom of your stove doesn't go all the way to the wall. They leave uh, six or eight inches of room at the back. So you wanna make sure that this plug is gonna end up in there. So usually if you're in that bottom foot of your wall cavity, that's gonna work out. The other thing to consider is kind of where the center of your, your opening for your stove is. And you wanna usually have this box either mounted to the right off center or the left off center so the cord has room to, to flex around. Your cord, when it plugs in here, the plug in will go in and the cord itself will leave the plug head going in the direction away from this, this uh, grounded uh, spot right here. So in our case, typically this would have been the center area of my stove over here. I offset the box to the right hand side and my cord would just be able to nicely bend in here when, when the stove was pushed in. Okay, and these, these simply are kind of slotted like this. It slips in, take a screwdriver, tighten those screws up. When you're doing all that, just pay attention to what's going on back behind there with all your wiring that everything's folding in there nice, the ground's out of the way, can't short out on anything and you're not getting any major kinking on any of the wires you've got. Okay, so just push it in, clip it down, tighten up your screws 
and you're good to go. So I think that wraps it up. And uh, you know, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And you can also click the thumbs up icon on any of our videos that you, you enjoyed and uh, that'll help our ratings out a little bit. And uh, besides that, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter if you're not already sick and tired of looking at me. And uh, our Patreon page, we're always looking for some supporters there. So thanks a lot for watching today.